One of our points today is going to be that outward religion or keeping the rules is not enough. In other words, if I'm a good Presbyterian and if I know the book of order backwards and forwards and I keep all the Presbyterian rules and do things decently in order and yet I have not learned to love you even in the midst of brokenness in the same way that I love myself then keeping the rules and doing things decently and in order is not enough. God wants our religion to grow us deep. And that means our religion is more than formality. It is more than signing the bottom line. Yes, I'm a Presbyterian. Yes, I grew up in a Presbyterian home. Yes, I've been baptized. Yes, I go to Sunday school and church. Yes, I'm an elder. Yes, I'm a deacon. Uh, yes, I go to the women's groups. Uh, yes, I do all these things. Oh, yes, I help out when there's family dinners. Oh, yes, I do this. Oh, yes, I, I keep all the rules. I'm a good Presbyterian. And yet... when I relate to somebody who is on my case I'm just as aggressive as they are true religion asks us to go deep Jesus said it means walking extra miles Jesus said, it's sharing a coat. If I've got two coats and you have one or none, I'm willing to give you what I have, even in the midst of my poverty, even in the midst of my weakness. Our scripture is from Micah chapter 6. And in Micah chapter 6 verse 2, the scripture says that the Lord, Yahweh, you know that word Yahweh, was a word that the, our Jewish friends in the Old Testament wouldn't even pronounce because they knew that God was so totally other than themselves that they could not say God's name in his fullness because they believed that if they said somebody's name in a sense you controlled them and they knew they could not control God so when they came to that word they would often say Lord that's why in many of your Bibles uh, rather than Yahweh or Jehovah they simply have the word in all capital letters L-O-R-D Lord Micah says that the Lord has a controversy with his people and that he will contend with Israel well I'm sure that if the Lord looked at any of our lives, he could point out things that we need to improve. Well, that's what Micah is saying to these people. They had done all the right things. And yet, they were lacking. In verse 3, Oh, my people, what have I done to you? And this is the Lord speaking. He's speaking directly to his people. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me. And then the Lord says all the things that he's done for the people. I brought you up from the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the house of slavery. I sent Moses before you and Arian and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember 
what King Balak and Moed de de devised, what Balaam son of Baor answered him, and what happened to them that you might know the saving acts of the Lord. And all those people were people who dabbled in the world. You know, to have one hand in godliness and yet to have another hand in the world and you, you, you kind of, you know, when you were in church, you were really nice with people. But when you were in the business world, you were really out to get them. God wants us to grow deep. So that true religion affects the way I am, not only when we're in this sanctuary, but when I'm out in the world dealing with honorary people. Of course, when I look in the mirror, I see somebody's pretty honorary too. So that helps me in dealing with honorary people because I know I'm one myself. And so the prophet goes on and he asks the question. Well, if the Lord is, has something that he wants me to change, what does the Lord want me to do? And so he asked the question, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God who is on high? Shall I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? You see, these people prided themselves in the sacrifices that they made to God which is religion oh I I give my tithe I give my offering and then I go outside and do what I want the prophet asked the question shall I come before God with my burnt offerings with calves a year old is that all that God wants is my money is my sacrifice? Is my outward religion? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams? With ten thousand rivers of oil? In other words, will the Lord be pleased if I, if I just overload the Lord with money? I can pay off God so that I can do what I want. Now, is that really what God wants? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? God, if I give up one of my children to you, surely then you'll let me do what I want to do. Because after all, you gave me free will. And I can do what I want to do. Isn't that right, God? I can just kind of pay you off at church and then I can go outside the church and I can do what I want to do because it's my life. Thank you for being my God and saving me because now I can do what I want. So does the Lord really want us to give up our firstborn and then just do what we want? The prophet's answer is no. And then the prophet stops preaching and starts to meddle in my life and yours. He has told you, O oh mortal man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? And there are three things. But to do justice to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God wants us to live our religion and not just practice it. God wants us to be mustard seeds of hope in a world that has given up on itself 
and simply does what it wants to do. God wants us to plant seeds of righteousness everywhere we live and move and have our being. Whether it's in the church or whether it's in our business or whether it's in our home or whether it's in our neighborhood. No matter what our profession, God wants us to live out our Christianity where we are, where we live and move every day of our lives. God wants us to plant seeds of justice and kindness in the way we relate to people, in the way we relate to ourselves, in the way we relate to our enemies. God wants us to be agents of change in a world that is closed in upon itself. God wants you to be an agent of change in your family, in your business, in your neighborhood, wherever you are. You don't do it in your own strength. You do it in the strength of God. And that's why in Micah, the final thing is that we are to walk humbly with your God. Because you see, when I'm walking humbly with God, I know I'm not the boss. I know I have a God who loves me in the midst of my brokenness and who has something good for me and I'm willing to yield and to get out of the way and to let God be God. That's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy to be kind to another human being who's hurt you deeply. Sometimes it's not easy to plant seeds of justice in a world all around where we look at injustice everywhere we look. But that's our job. And so into this kind of a world comes Jesus in Matthew 5. And Jesus, like the prophet Micah, doesn't want us just to do the religious rules and then go out into the world and do anything we want. Jesus wants our religion to touch us deeply in our hearts, to change us. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, this Pharisee, Nicodemus, God wants to do something in your life. He not only wants you to keep the religious rules, Nicodemus, but God wants you to be born in a different way. To relate to yourself and to relate to the world and to relate to me as God in a completely different way. And that means, Nicodemus, that your heart will have to be changed. You will have to be born again. And so Jesus begins to preach this message in Matthew 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on top of the mountain and he sat down there with his disciples as they came to him. And then Jesus began to speak and he taught them, saying, and these are the familiar beatitudes that many of us have grown up learning. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, if I'm proud in spirit, I'm not going to listen to the still small voice of God. I'm only going to listen to me. I'm not going to listen to you, because I'm the only one that's right. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. As I was thinking about this, you know, you look at our world today, 
on the news you hear all these horrible stories of violence of predators of people who are afraid to ride the subway maybe it is that God wants us to be intercessors for the brokenness that we see in our world Jesus said blessed are those of you who mourn for they shall be comforted people have asked me before you know I just don't have peace about my life I don't have what the Bible calls the peace of God that passes understanding and I think the way God wants us to have that kind of peace is when we begin to humble ourselves and we begin to pray that God would do something in our world and in our families and in our churches that we cannot do in our own strength we begin to pray deeply that God would do something in our midst that we cannot snap our fingers and do verse 5 blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth you see if I am meek I give way to what God wants when I'm not meek I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Don't get in my way. If you get in my way, I'll run over you. You better watch out. To be meek is to have an humble heart. Is to not think too much of myself are my own ideas but to leave room for you and what God is saying through you and other people blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled God wants us to have an eagerness for the things of God not a lukewarm attitude oh I'm, I'm a Christian oh yeah oh I go to church oh I put a little in the plate oh I help people ever ever now, now, now and then Jesus says a true Christian grows deep and is eager for the kingdom of God you're hungry for it you're thirsty for it. You're starving for it. You want God more than anything you want in all the world. You remember what Jesus says a little on in the Sermon on the Mount. Seek first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God and then all these things will be added unto you. God wants us to be hungry for the deep things of God. verse 7 blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy you see any of us in this room can fall flat on our faces any of us in this room can fall short of the glory of God any of us in this room can sin and we do all the time So when we see people who have fallen, do we have mercy for them? Do we offer a hand of love? Here's my hand. God loves you. Do we encourage one another? Or do we stand back and we point, look, look what they did. I'm sure I'm glad that I didn't do that. Of course, I might have thought it, but I didn't do it. Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, 
for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. True religion comes from the heart. True religion is not outwardness. It is a growing, ever-changing, ever-deepening relationship with a God who you will never see or never touch. With the God of creation. With the God who loves you in spite of who we are. God wants us eagerly to grow deep in the power of the Holy Spirit. In verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. God wants us to live in harmony with one another. And when we see disharmony, God wants us at times to say a word of peace. Now, sometimes that's got me in trouble. I had one man come to me at 9 o'clock at night, and he was shivering. He, 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 was, he had hives all over his body. He, John, he says, uh, me and this other man in the church We've known each other for 30 years, and we got into this big argument. John, I want you to go over there and talk to him and encourage him to, so we need to forgive each other. Can you help me? And so I was this naive pastor, you know, you, just my first pastorate. And so I go over this man's house, and um, I encourage him to, you know, reconcile with this other man in the church and so a day later I get a call from his wife what are you doing you're gonna make my husband have a heart attack <laughs> I was trying to bring peace and yet I didn't really know how it's hard to be a peacemaker it's hard to stick my hand in the life of a relationship that's broken. It's messy. I don't want to do it. And yet there's times when we need to speak a word of reconciliation. Even when it's hard. Because God does want us to live in peace with one another. And God wants us to be willing in faith to attempt to bring people together. Even when we don't know what we're doing. In verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Many times I think we don't say things to people because we're afraid of what they'll say back to us. So that rather than living in faith, we live in fear. And I don't think God wants us to live in fear. God wants us to trust the Lord with our whole heart. And to lean not on our own understandings and in all our ways to acknowledge God. And to believe that God has something good and that God can deliver us. True religion is not based on outwardness. It's based on a growing relationship with the one God of all creation. In verse 11, 
Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love that verse. Rejoice and be glad. God wants us to live as rejoicing people in the midst of a broken world that at times gets under our skin. And it's hard to rejoice sometimes. It's, it's difficult to be happy. Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, sometimes it's, I'm just not happy. And Jesus reminds us that if you really want peace, if you really want to grow deeper with God, then you'll learn that in the midst of your hard times and in the midst of times when people are on your case, that deeper than your human emotion is the reality that God loves you in the midst of your situation and that God has something good for you. And that when you will relax, I tell people, just relax, take off your shoes, and trust God no matter what. That that will bring joy to your life. And I believe that's what God wants. God wants us to be happy and to be glad. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. What is our lesson today? Our lesson today is that being a Presbyterian and doing things decently in order and doing all the religious stuff is not enough. God wants you and me to grow deep and to learn to love ourselves and other people in a way that brings justice and kindness and humility into our lives. And when we begin to do that, now we'll, we'll, we'll never reach perfection, but when we're yearning for it and seeking it, then in God's time, God will bring joy and hope and life into your life and mine. Let us bow for prayer. Father in heaven, we're thankful that you're always there for us and that you care for us. And it's beyond simply outward religion. So, Lord, we pray that you would be our vision and that you would give us hope in the midst of a world that causes us to be afraid and to give up. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.